Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. This is being filmed on uh, Tuesday, February the 23rd, I hope, uh, 2016. First part of Citizens Forum is always the Walton Jack show. Um, and I just, I just want to say that, you know, things seem to be getting even crazier in, in, in the world around us. We've got to somehow change directions. I don't know how we can do it. Um, but, you know, so we're going to be talking about issues, but what we really need to do is we've got to change the game somehow. So whoever it is that's ruling over us loses some of their power and we begin to have some kind of a say in what is going on in our world. I mean, the public is almost completely disenfranchised. And, you know, the power of democracy is gone if, if the government doesn't care what we, what we think. And the other part of democracy, a big part, is the media. You've got to have a free press in a democracy. And in Canada, all, every, virtually every television station, every radio station, every major newspaper, and all the community dailies as well, or weeklies, are all owned by half a dozen or eight giant corporations. And they have, um, we, only, we only get to see what they want us to see. I think that's, so, so yesterday, today, uh, yesterday on Monday, uh, I hope that, that was the 22nd, um, the Canadian Parliament passed a, uh, not a bill, but they voted. The Parliament voted. And, and here, it was on the issue of BDS. BDS is uh, the boycott, divestment, and sanctions uh, thing that's uh, against what Israel is doing in, in the Middle East and Palestine. So this was passed by Parliament of Canada yesterday. That Given Canada and Israel share a long history of friendship, as well as economic and diplomatic relations, the House reject the boycott, divestment, and sanctions, the BDS movement, which promotes the demonization and delegitimization, delegitimization of the State of Israel, and call upon the government to condemn any and all attempts by Canadian organizations, groups, or individuals to promote the BDS movement, both here at home and abroad. So Canada's Parliament is calling upon the government of Canada to condemn uh, the BDS movement. Now, I don't know that much about it. I'm not opposed to it. I kind of support it. I think it's supported by some labor unions. Can I say that? Some, some universities, um, s some churches. And, you know, the criticism of this is that if this is what people think, why is our government condemning it? Where, where are we going? So anyways, the other part of this is that Canadians aren't really being told. Because I went to the website, uh, you know, I googled uh, Canada's, Canada Parliament or Canadian Parliament and BDS. And I hope you'll see on the screen uh, what what I saw, which is that there's nothing from the Canadian media. It's not being reported. There was a story from, ha from an Israeli newspaper, Haaretz, which is actually a pretty good newspaper, um, reporting it as, as having happened. But nothing from, a, from CBC. I still haven't seen anything on CBC, nothing on CTV, nothing in the Globe and Mail. There was something in the Times columnist. But it's just quite surprising that our our parliament condemned something that, you know, a lot of Canadians feel is, is absolutely the right thing to be doing. Yeah. And we don't even, they don't even tell us about it. And it's odd, you know, it's odd because there's, well, where's the groundswell of public sentiment to express support of the state of Israel? Is there really a, a huge groundswell that the government has to say something to, you know, keep the public from rising up? So, I mean, you know, it's obvious. You've got to wonder why. Why are they doing that? What, uh, obviously, they're trying to send some kind of message to someone, mostly to the state of Israel. That's all business as usual. We're the new regime in Canada. Don't worry. Things are going to go on as, as they have. And we're not going to you know, stand in 
in your way in, in the business that you have to take care of in, in the Middle East. So I, I really think when they're talking about delegitimizing anyone, the government is really taking great steps to try to delegitimize points of view that are not the same. So it's exactly... They're not theirs, that are not yeah, allowed. it's exactly the opposite. What they're doing is they're saying this point of view just is not going to be shared by the government of Canada. It, uh, whether it's correct or not is another whole thing. And they condemn it. And they condemn and it. Condemn the thing it. is that... It's powerful. That's Especially another, with that's CSIS another thing is that, powers. You know, it, it's so strange that somehow every statement that we make has to be right. Uh, some kind of scientific measurement that this is right or wrong. You know, in a, in a democratic society, you have a right to express your views. They could be really wrong. There's nothing... All, all the other person does, or the other body that's listening, refutes their claims and says, no, let's set the record straight. You don't have that right. That's how it all works. But when you start saying, no, you can't have that point of view. That's, we're not going to go there. I mean, it's shutting down democracy in many ways. And you know what? Well, I hadn't even thought of that, but I think you're right. And that makes it even more interesting that yeah. we're not being told. Because here is our parliament yeah. voting to shut down our democracy. You know, maybe it's only one thing, but once you do it with one thing, where, where does it stop? Yeah. And, and they don't even tell us about it. No, there's a lot of other stuff going on there, too. I mean, that's an issue where, uh, this generally speaking, half the population don't have a clue about it, really. They really don't. Half yeah. Canadians don't know, uh, about, and that, just don't know what's going enough. on. The people who have spent the time and it tried to educate themselves on the issue, 90% of them would condemn Israel for their actions. Anybody has spent any real time, if you want to call it scientific analysis or whatever, or just plain common sense, you're going to reject yeah. what Israel is doing. So there might be 10% of people that support uh, it, the state of Israel. And you know what? The poor state of Israel, I mean, they've been injected in there and they have to pay the price. Yeah. You know, the, the people there are also paying a price. Everybody is being manipulated and maneuvered by these powerful forces from above and outside that control the game and that's the game that we've got to change and it's happening in Canada you know no, I mean we're lucky here in Canada in many many ways but we now have homeless we didn't have homeless people before why why are we moving in that direction yeah. you know and and a and hundred other things so we can see where Canada is being taken and, and the the aim is for a small group of people to have all the wealth and power. Yeah, and you're allowed to express yourself as long as they agree with what you're saying. And if they don't agree with what you're saying, they're just going to take your right away from, from saying that. I mean, this is what's crucial, that we, be, we become and remain tolerant with points of view. I mean, uh, some of them really... I'd always defend anyone's right to express their point of view, they're like, unless they're advocating violence. Um, no, we, if they have a, the zeal to express their view, I'll entertain it. But I won't say that I'll agree with it, and I, it might stimulate me to really show, if I think I know the errors in their ways, to express that. And that's how, it, that's how we build up consciousness in the society, by hashing this stuff out and really working on it, and really thinking these issues through. We have to do that, you know. Consensus has to be reached through a real process. Do you think that's happening in our society of today? I mean, you know, in my life, there there's don't even seem to be any avenues where that can happen. Well, there's not any real zeal for it. I mean, I often at work will bring stuff up and, and, uh, and with, the fellows that are, I'm working with, and, and I can really sense a disinterest in what I'm yeah. talking about. And that's fair enough, but there are a lot of people who are interested, Yeah. and there are no forums sort of for us, like a, a place to go, a place to meet, meetings every once in a while. You know, yeah. interesting that, that, that you actually want to go to because it's going to be a good and interesting evening. I know there are some, but it seems like whatever your your interests and values are, it would be nice if there were more just ways to get together and that's kind of, that is democracy and, and that's neighborhoods. Yeah. And that's, anyways. Well, I brought in one thing, one story, and, and uh, 
It was in this paper on Sunday. Uh, can we get a shot of that? It may take a few seconds, but we will. Anyway, I, the, 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 the story is all about uh, lead and water in, 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 in the public schools of British Columbia. Uh, four years ago, they did testing uh, of uh, lead in a school up in Kitimat or Prince Rupert, found uh, elevated levels of it, uh, and uh, then promptly forgot all about it. Uh, four years later, the topic comes up again. I don't really know for sure why. And, and uh, they, they realize they haven't done anything about the lead in the water in the school. And of course, this, the chief medical health officer and others have become involved. I'm just gonna read a couple of paragraphs and get you acquainted with it. Uh, BC Health Minister Terry Lake deflected calls Monday for province-wide testing of drinking water in older schools, despite the discovery of elevated lead levels in tap water in schools in Prince Rupert and Kitimat. Lake said medical health officers respond when issues come to their attention, but he was unable to say how they would know about an issue in the schools without regular tests. I mean, that's the crux of it. They're saying that the, somebody else has to bring this issue forward and then the health officers will do something about it. But they well, won't test for it. How would you know, right? Oh, I see, somebody else has to. But yeah. <laughs> Like, how would you know? Because the, they're not testing the water. So, I mean, that's the, that's the joke. Uh, I mean, uh, the sad joke, I guess, about how, the, how this system works and particularly how the medical health officers so what's, operate. So what's wrong? I mean, why sh shouldn't it be that if, you know, somebody does some test, which the testing yeah. was done four years ago, they found lead in, in pipes, in, in the drinking water in public yeah. schools, and basically nothing happened. Well, shouldn't everybody jump to attention and say, we're going to do something about this? We don't want this to happen? Well, you know, one would think, now in Ontario, they have testing automatically. They test the water in the schools. You know, without anybody asking them to, they, believe it or not, the, the Ministry of the Environment, the Ministry of Health or somebody marches right in there without being asked and takes a water sample. And then they see if there's any lead there. I mean, this is an amazing thing they do in Ontario without anybody asking them to do it. And then if they, you know, if they find lead in the water, they're probably, I think they're inclined to do something about it. But in BC, no, we don't do that. You know, we just, even when they test the water and find lead in it, they wait four years for somebody else to complain before they start taking steps. I mean, this is not just lax. This is just, it's, it's such a sad situation. Now, the thing was, it kind of called my attention to the, to the whole thing was the wording that uh, the chief medical health officer used when talking about the issue. <clears throat> the Dr. Perry Kendall said last week that in the past when lead was found in school drinking water, blood tests revealed that the children's lead levels were not elevated. Now isn't that the blood levels in the children for lead were not elevated. Well, what does that tell you, John? It tells you that there was lead in their blood. That they did find lead, lead levels in their blood, but they were not elevated. And what does elevated mean? Well, that's some mythical measurement that the chief medical health officer has that he doesn't care to share with us. What were those lead levels? You know, <laughs> we're talking about something that has been known to cause permanent brain damage since 1925. There was, there was no debate after 1925 that lead caused permanent brain damage. It took 50 years for them to start taking lead out of gasoline and out of paint and everything. 50 years after the debate was over. Now we're getting into, we're pushing up to 100 years later <laughs> and we have the chief medical health officer making statements like this that there was no elevated levels of lead. There's no safe level of lead in, in the bloodstream. And to let to expose children to this, is, it's going to be detrimental to their development. You can't look at it any other way. So why does, and this is just one example. I mean, you can look at Site C. Yeah. You can look at sewage treatment here. 
You can look at what the United States is doing in the Middle East. You can look at the fact that Alberta's broke after being poisoned by the oil industry. Can, can we say that? Half of Alberta, you know, worth. And, and it keeps happening over. So is this the best we can do? Or? Here's a suggestion. I was just driving down wondering what, 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 what I do if I was the, had some position of authority. I'd say, let's not go overboard here. We want to test all the schools once a year. And you're going to test the school in the worst case scenario. Get at the end of the pipe, have the water sitting there for a couple of weeks. You want the worst case scenario. Test that because somebody could get exposed to that. And you publish it. You just put it up on the website. These are the lead levels in these schools. Once a year, automatically goes up for the public to read. Wouldn't cost that much. And let the public decide, oh, that seems a little bit high. Or maybe, you know, maybe they're happy with those levels. Okay. But we really don't know what the levels yes. are. And it's 2016. Exactly. Yeah, so, and, and it's the same with cell phones. Right? Yeah. And it's the same with smart meters. And it's the same with vaccines. Yeah. And it's the same with medicines. And it's the same with everything else. So the, the question is, how, you know, you can't get, that simple thing done. I mean, you could probably fight for the next 20 years and it's not going to happen. Just as I fought for, you know, 20 years way back when to try and protect some of the forests. You, you can't do it. Well, you know, the thing is that this, they won't allow this, the it. system is, is, is it's, it's constipated. It's just nothing moves. Nothing's going to happen to Dr. Perry Kendall for, for what looks like to me not doing his job. Nothing's going to happen to him. There's no real criticism. There's no consequences. You know, <laughs> people make huge decisions about the safety of our children, and it's just a shrug, and on we go. So obviously there's something terribly wrong with how the ministries are operating, particularly the Ministry of Health, uh, and particularly how the chief medical health officer and the regional health officers uh, operate, and who they're accountable to, and for in what ways. It seems very nebulous exactly who their boss is. It's, it's, I know, you've looked into it. It's very hard to nail it down. Uh, and there's no consequences for, for being negligent. If this is a case of negligence, that a chief medical health officer should just push everybody aside and say, okay, you can all have an opinion on what you want. I want testing done here. I don't care what you think, where I should do it or how. I want testing done because I'm the chief medical health officer and the public is counting on me to take care of them. I perceive my job to be that. You know, it's, it seems so obvious to you and I. But somehow in the bureaucracy of the world, that all gets lost. And even the government, when they get caught at it, it they start using this double speak and tricky language about looking at it and discussing. What are we missing here? There's, there's something, you know, I just say, you don't want to call them crazy because we're not supposed to do that anymore. But <laughs> we have to find another word. I don't know what, how to describe it. You know, it's, it just doesn't make any sense. There's just something very, very wrong. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's, <laughs> it's completely endemic. It's everywhere. And is this as good as it as we can be or is there some can we be better but there's some force that is there to make sure that what we want we as the people of the province the people of the city and the people of the country and the world it just doesn't matter what we want I've, I mean you know looking back on my life you never get asked to make a decision in your yeah. you know you can go to an open house you can vote for the government but then they do exactly what they want are we ever asked, like, is the public asked, would you like to see testing for lead in public schools where it seems like there might be a risk? But they don't ask us, and they just do what they you know, want. I, you know, you know how much I've worked on the Wi-Fi issue and others have the wireless technology in schools. And if you look at the history, this, they don't have a good record. They had asbestos in a lot of those schools. They had to tear them down. They had lead in the pipes in a lot of schools, and they tore them down instead of renovating them. 
These were big mistakes, very poor decisions. And, and I think the trustees and others made decisions based upon the, the uh, recommendations of health officials about safe exposure to these types of products. They're just administrators. They, 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 they don't know. They're relying on these health experts. And the health experts, well, where are they getting their information? It appears to be coming a lot from the industry. And, and, and you know, it appears that they're protecting the industry. Uh, well, where are we now? We use plastic. I mean, yeah. how good is that? Is there, I mean, maybe what it comes down to is, is if we're going to have pipes, there's going to be problems. What's the safest? Do you know? Well, there are the new plumbing codes and the new materials for pipe and, and uh, is, uh, does not have any lead whatsoever. It doesn't have lead, but it's plastic, so who knows there what are, it is. There are some, still some issues there, for sure. I mean, uh, lead is, is known to cause brain damage. Yes, yes. So, well, uh, I guess what we should do is make sure that safety, not something else, is number one. We're out of time. Walter, thank you very much. Always a pleasure, John. Thanks for watching this segment of Sydney's.